with more. Welcome back to the Houston Astrodome. I'm Steve Evans, along with Brock Yates, and of course, we're here for the Red Man TNT Super Nationals. We've got tractor pulling and monster trucks and mud bugging. We have got it all, and it's nonstop. And we've got machines like this. How about this 9,200-pound modified tractor of Fred Freeman? Five big block Chevrolet engines are just now coming to life. And this is a machine built by Tim Engler, who coincidentally is also the leader in the class right now at 182 feet. A very interesting gear design ties all of these five motors together, and that was originally conceived by Engler. You know, tires are critical on these machines, as they are on all race or tow vehicles. Brock Yates took a look earlier at how they're built. Over the last few years, we've seen tractor technology grow by leaps and bounds, especially with the big pullers, multi-engine, supercharged uh, aluminum block V8s, monster horsepower. But the tire technology has stayed basically stable. That is until now. Up uh, over the last few years, we've seen, how can I call them, how about tractor slicks? This is a giant tractor tire, a Firestone, uh, standard issue, basically, except Fred Freeman, one of the professionals out of Indiana, like a lot of his counterparts, has shaved the tire. Now, why would you shave the lugs that were originally about three inches high on his tire down to make it uh, almost like a slick? Well, Fred and the rest of the guys reason that these big lug tires will tend to dig into the dirt and slow the tractor down, will bog it down a little bit. So now the trend is to ride on top of the dirt. You get more tire revolutions and the tire floats on top of the dirt as opposed to digging in. Gives them more traction, believe it or not, just like an asphalt slick on an asphalt racetrack. And that kind of tire design could be ideal for this racetrack because the track is tearing up. If it had the giant lugs, it'd probably throw dirt right out of the Astrodome. Well, it's got a roof on it. You couldn't do that. Angler still leads at 182 feet. Bruce Hutchinson making bacon. The closest to him at 167 feet. Now, here is a tractor, as I said, built by Ingler. It's got those slick tires, Brock. In fact, those are the very ones you looked at. It sure does. And uh, Fred uh, is now going to back up against old Ironsides here and see what he can do. You know, we have not had a full pull here. That means that they, uh, the guys, the TNT guys, have really loaded this sled up just about right. They don't like it if there are a bunch of full pulls. In fact, if there are, then in the next round, they're going to put a whole bunch more weight on it and work the sled completely differently. This is good competition. They like that. 182 feet, that is uh, well over almost uh, 30 feet short of going out the back. Here goes Freeman. The front end came up awfully quick, Brock. Maybe too quick. It's not really holding like it should. He's lost control, headed for the outside boundary. If he crosses that, he'd be disqualified. And he's got a problem with the front motor. Yep, I think he hurt that front motor. So overall, Fred uh, comes up way short. I Yes, 151.54 feet, which is uh, well short of the mark. Going to keep him out of contention. Let's have another look. As Steve said, the front end came right up, almost instantly as soon as he dropped the hammer and then you can see that uh, smoke coming out of that forward motor that reduces the horsepower by about a thousand so uh, he's in trouble all right off the mark let's see what Fred's got to say about it well the official measurement is over 150 feet but I think the course you took you went about 175 feet yeah that's very possible I got a little light on the front when it uh, gets up in the air like that you really only have the brakes to steer with Yes, that's correct. That's how I drove down the track was with the brakes. Well, back to the open mud competition. Jackie Hunter holding on to that lead. But right now, it's Richard Whitfield in a mud bogger called Wildfire. And boy, this is, yeah, I'll tell you what, Steve, there are more weird, wacky shapes, I think, in these mud bog vehicles than any other kind of competition I've ever seen. A lot of them with the Jeep influence, the little fiberglass cowling there uh, to resemble an AMC Jeep. Uh, and, you know, after all, the Jeep really did start the four-wheel drive trend in this country. He is all over the place. But Whitfield gets it out of the pit. 2.31 seconds, the time to beat, as you all know by now, 2.09, not even close. Uh-oh, they're standing up again, Brock. It's time for the semifinals at Monster Truck. In the near lane will be Jim Kramer in Bigfoot. His competition, Steve Dane, King Kong 3. It's a good start for both trucks. The cars are not much of an obstacle anymore, but the dirt mounds certainly are. And the real trick is to get turned down here. Let's watch Kramer. Here comes King Kong. Oh, and I believe they touched there, but they not hard enough to do any damage. Kramer didn't let it bother him one bit, and he is going to cross the finish line first, bouncing to a halt. 
In fact, it's almost as if uh, Dane gave him a little bit of a butt, kind of propelled him over that first mount. Here comes Dane, obviously disappointed. Let's take one more look. This is Kramer making that critical turn at the end of the track. Notice he's using those rear wheels to steer him around. And right over there, you see King Kong arriving at the same place at the same time. A little bit of a bunt right there. That is enough to kind of... Pro you remember I told you earlier about General Sam Houston, who defeated the Mexican army and led to Texas independence? Well, Texans over the years have appreciated that, and that is Sam Houston Park, in the shadow of gleaming office buildings, a, a quiet spot, a reflective pool, a lot of green grass, historical buildings. And the Astrodome, it's not quite as quiet as it is at Sam Houston Park, Brock. Boy, it sure is. It's about as noisy as it'll ever get in a motorsports event as we watch the next man come up to the line in the 9,200-pound class. That is Rick Hillsley. Now, he has a, a tractor called Sassy Massey, but I don't see a whole lot of Massey Ferguson bits and pieces on that one. I see big, supercharged Chevrolet engine. All five of them mounted up there as we watch him off the line, Steve. Now, he tried to really be gentle with that throttle, and it may pay off for him. He's got some good distance going. The balance just about right, maybe a little nose heavy, but old Ironsides wins again. The distance is respectable, 160 feet, but still 22 feet short of what he needed for first place. Let's watch again. The front end... I take it back. It looked like it was balanced real well. The problem is here, one tire in the rear will get more grip than another and veer him off to the left. You haven't seen any tractors go right. They all seem to go left. And that cost him a lot of distance because he had to get on the brakes to try to steer it. That slows the wheel speed. And henceforth, you lose forward momentum. Well, Rick, it gets tougher and tougher, doesn't it? Boy, it sure does, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> any, any specific problems? Well, I don't know. I think... I don't know, it just seems like we're getting out, out horsepower now and then, but... Boy, that thing was just like hooking onto a tree tonight, seemed like to me, but... <laughs> she sure sounded stout. Oh, yeah, but now it run good. You know, I, I don't know what... I guess we're afraid to blow a bell to something at the end there, but... Boy, it did run good. Brian sure keeps it running good. 